If you don't know what it's like to have an emergency fund in place when you most need it, then you're gonna to wanna to stay tuned because that's what we're talking about today. Hi friends and welcome to The Budget Bounce. If we haven't met yet, I'm Jen and we talk all about living life on a budget, saving for our future, paying down our debt, and all the life that happens along the way. If those are things that interest you, you're gonna to wanna to stick around and hit that subscribe button and tap the bell so that you'll be notified every time I post a new video. So emergencies are gonna happen. It's not a matter of if, but when it's going to happen to you. It could be something that's predictable, like you need to have car repairs done, you might have an appliance breakdown, or maybe you have to replace a device, like a smartphone or a laptop. It could also be the unthinkable, the types of things we don't wanna think about, but we need to be most prepared for, like a critical illness or injury, loss of your car or home due to a fire or accident, an unexpected loss of income, or even the loss of a loved one. If you're trying to get out of debt, or maybe you've just started budgeting and you haven't set up a savings fund for emergencies yet, your ability to pay for even minor emergencies may be very limited. And when that happens, we often feel forced into taking out another loan or grabbing a credit card and using that to cover the expenses for the financial part of the emergency. So when you don't have an emergency fund available, it sends you into a financial crisis on top of the crisis that you're already dealing with. It makes solving the problem a lot more difficult. It increases stress, which hinders your ability to make good decisions. It can have an impact on your relationships. It can have an impact on your work. It can impact your overall health. And worst of all, I think in some circumstances is it can make you feel like you don't have control over your money and losing that sense of control that you maybe have established can be really hard to come back from. So let's talk about what some of these emergencies might look and feel like if you had an emergency fund. So I've got two real life examples. These are things that actually happened to me in my life and they happened at very different times in very different circumstances. So in the first one, I'm single, I own my home, I have a single income, and I have just cut up my credit cards a few months before because I'm trying to get out of debt. I've got cash envelopes that I'm working with, a debit card for my checking account, and $600 in my baby emergency fund. And then the sewer backs up in my one and only bathroom in my tiny little house. So I called a plumber and had him come out and it ended up being after hours. By the time he got to me, I was very lucky that he didn't charge me uh, whatever that extra fee is for the after hours calls. And it was just because the one ahead of him took a look took longer than he planned. And so, you know, I got lucky that way, right? But he was able to fix the problem for around $200. Might have been a little higher than that, but I, it definitely wasn't 250. Well, I was okay with that because I had that $600 sitting in the bank. And honestly, I had enough anxiety to deal with without thinking about the financial part of it. I'm a first time homeowner. I haven't owned my home very long. I've never had to deal with a problem like this before. I have a million things going through my head wondering what this problem is and what it's going to take to fix it. I'm thinking, how am I going to take a shower? How am I going to do my laundry? How am I going to do dishes? I can't even brush my teeth until this gets fixed. How long am I going to be without my one and only bathroom? That caused a lot of stress. You know, it's one thing if you know what's coming, if you have an idea, I was clueless. But I had a sense of calm about the financial part of this crisis that really didn't end up being, it didn't add to the crisis because it wasn't a crisis because I had the money. And yes, I was lucky that this issue was um, something that could be covered by a $600 emergency fund because yeah, plumbing can get really expensive really fast depending on the problem. But I had a sense of calm about the situation in terms of the financial part because I knew I had that baby emergency fund sitting there. And I do realize in this scenario, it could have cost way more than $200. I get that, that I was probably lucky on that. But my point is that doesn't matter I had the money when I needed it, and it really gave me confidence in what I was doing and to keep me going toward my financial goals, which at that point in time was to pay down about $16,000 of credit card debt. And I was down, 
I think I was down to around, oh, I don't know, 12 or 13,000. And I was not making much money at all at this time. And I had managed to make this traction in just a few months. And even with this emergency, everything was fine. So my second example happened just a few weeks ago, and it, I'm in a different, completely different place in my life now. Um, it's a lot more complicated situation and much more expensive. So what happened was our refrigerator died. The compressor went out on it. You could hear it grinding in there, and it just died. It was doing nothing, and we didn't discover it for 24 hours, so we lost everything that was perishable in the fridge. We threw away hundreds of dollars of food. Our fridge was completely full and so was the freezer when this happened. Now, at the point that this is happening, I am now married with two other people in the household. We have dual income. We have a much higher income than I had back then. And we have a boatload more debt. But what we also had was several thousand dollars in our emergency fund and some more in sinking funds if we needed it. We're now out hundreds of dollars in food. Our food supply is much uh, less. It's much lower than it was before this happened. We only have one mini fridge in the house to help us get by with all of this. And we have limited things that we can eat because while yes, you can, you can eat out of your pantry, there are many things you need out of the refrigerator to make a lot of things work. So we improvised for 11 days. Now we're in this stressful mode and trying to figure out what we're going to do. So we need to figure out whether or not we're going to have it serviced, like replace that part and have it serviced and, and get it taken care of that way. Are we going to buy used again? Because the one that died was a used one that we bought, or are we going to buy a brand new refrigerator altogether? And all of this is happening while my husband is traveling every weekend, 500 miles round trip at least, to go visit his niece who is in hospice with cancer. He's dealing with grief. He's working full time. He's traveling every weekend. He's working on his master's course that he's in. And he's fighting anxiety and depression that was coming on pretty strong during all of this. And now we have to figure out what we're going to do about our fridge and our food supply. And that same night after buying that fridge over lunch, we ended up, Matt connected with somebody in the afternoon to buy an old Kenmore refrigerator. The guy delivered it to us and we just gave him 20 bucks cash for that. But we bought the, we bought the refrigerator for $100 and we put it in the corner of, there's a corner of our kitchen that we had room for it. And now we have a refrigerator to get everything out of the coolers because we were changing ice, you know, every day. It was, it, it was, not good conditions and uh, so now we have a refrigerator and when we're done with all of this that refrigerator can go in the basement and it can be a backup for like drinks and stuff so because we entertain throughout the year and whatnot and I like to have that stuff on hand and we don't really have a good place to to keep it and as a point of reference we actually intended to put our refrigerator from our old house in the basement of our new house but when the movers got it over there, over here to this house, they couldn't get it down the stairs to the basement. It wouldn't fit. And so we ended up sending it back to our other house and leaving it there. And um, we just didn't have a refrigerator down the basement. And now this problem ended up solving a different, it's not really a problem, but a preference that we had to have a refrigerator. So it's a smaller one and it's downstairs. There are a few reasons why all of this fell into place like it did. There were a lot of moving parts there. We were trying to, you know, with all the life that was happening along the way, you know, while we were trying to work through this, um, we had a few things going for us. So first of all, we knew we had the money. We did not have to worry about it. Even if we bought, you know, a refrigerator that cost more than $2,200, we had the money if we needed it. And second of all, we came up with a solution, and by we, I mean Matt, came up with a solution that you know, to buy this other refrigerator that gave us more time and relieved some of the pressure that we were putting on ourselves and feeling to make that decision and, and make that big, it's, that's an ex, 
the substantial purchase, you know, like right now. We also ended up ordering a product that was in stock. And then we had the time that we spent researching everything to determine exactly what it is that we wanted and needed to buy. And then we had the time that we needed to do the research, which ended up resulting in us hitting that sale on Monday. That if we had made this purchase on Saturday or Sunday, we would not have hit that sale. So through all of the stress of figuring out how to feed the family through this, how to you know replenish our food supply, managing our cold food and coolers, and all of the other life that was happening at the same time, we didn't have to worry about the money. Not even for a second. If you're new here, you wouldn't know that for the last 15 or 16 months, we have not had a good run. <laughs> there have been a lot of issues and it has resulted in a lot of emotional spending. And it, we've made a lot of poor choices with our money in the last few months. But this, this was, we ended up having a well thought out approach to a crisis that was stressful but it wasn't a financial crisis for us, which made it easier to get through the rest of it. And that this was a big win for us. I mean, I'm really proud of us and the fact that we were able to get through this. We put in the work to save the money so we would have it when we needed it. That is what an emergency fund is for. So now I've shared our successes, you know, in these two scenarios that I provided to you. There were others over the years. These are just the two that came to mind that had the most emotional uh, relief for me, I guess, um, that, you know, when I was thinking about examples I could share, these were the two that stood out. But some of you are probably thinking, well, that's not going to happen to me. And I know that you're still thinking that because for years, I was thinking that. For years, I was thinking that. I think I was in my 40s before I realized, oh, crap, like, okay, no, it really... Those things weren't just, uh, those things that have happened over the years, those were emergencies and you weren't prepared for them and you use credit cards and emergencies are happening all the time. You need to properly prepare for them. So here's what I propose. I encourage you to do an exercise uh, here that we're thinking about the examples that I provided earlier. Um, imagine that one of those happened in your life. So how might that affect your you and your family? How might it affect your work? How might that particular emergency affect your health? How would the crisis make you feel? Now imagine that same emergency and you don't have the money to pay for the financial part of it. Do you have other resources available to you other than taking out a loan or grabbing a credit card? If not, then you need an emergency fund. And honestly, everybody needs an emergency fund no matter what you're thinking through. You can justify this all you want, but you need to have an emergency fund. So a good rule of thumb is to uh, make your first goal to get one month of expenses into your emergency fund. And if that's not a reasonable amount, if that's not something that you feel like you can manage, then try to get $500 in there or $1,000 in there. When that first emergency happened for me, I was shooting for $1,000. I had 600 when it happened and I had to use a couple hundred of it, and then I continued to build that back up to where it was, and I reached $1,000, and then I started to pay off my debt. And you wanna put it in a high yield savings account. They're the ones that are offering the higher interest rates. So right now, as of the point that I'm recording this, um, CIT Bank is offering 1.9%, Ally Bank is offering 1.6%. I can put links to both of those in the description if you're interested in those. And you want to put it in a high yield savings account for a couple of reasons. One, you want it to work for you, right? So you want that higher interest rate because I have other savings accounts that are 0.09%. So these are 1.6 and 1.9 versus 0.09. That's what most savings accounts are going for. So <clears throat> you want it to work for you while it's sitting there on the sidelines for you but you also want to put it in a place that it's not really easy to get to. So when, when you do this, do not set up a debit card with this account. You set it up so that the only way you can get to it is to transfer it out of that bank into whatever bank that your primary accounts are in. And by doing that, it makes you think hard about, okay, do I really need this? 
because I have to wait two to three days, business days, to get it. Do I really need it or don't I? Do I really need to use this emergency fund money or can I do this some other way? So meeting this initial goal of one month of expenses is going to give you the confidence to continue to work towards whatever financial goals you have. So whether it be you want to start investing or you want to pay down your debt, maybe you're saving for a home. I mean, it could be any number of things. Whatever your goals are, having an emergency fund is important because if you don't, then when emergencies happen, you're going to have to tap into things that you you might have had earmarked for, for something else or you might have to get into debt again and we don't want to be doing that. And so again, you'll have the confidence to keep you know, working on your goals and that might even, you might get so inspired, you keep on working on building up your emergency fund. I mean, you just never know. Ideally, when this is all said and done, you wanna have six to 12 months of expenses in an emergency fund. Now, this is not a requirement for a lot of people. Um, it's not possible for them to save that much and that's okay. Save as much as you can and try to have at least one month in there. Even one month will give you some cushion in case something happens, whether it be you have car repairs and appliance that you have to replace, if you were to lose income for some reason, things like that. Because if you have an emergency that is going to be, it's going to cost more than you can adjust for in your budget, you're going to be really glad that you have that savings account sitting over there on the sidelines just waiting, just waiting for you when you need it. My hope for you is that you will never have to use a loan or a credit card to take care of an emergency again. I'd love to hear from you about what your emergency fund goals are and what your progress is. So feel free to leave that in the comments if you're comfortable sharing. That's all I've got for you today. Till next time.